And a 10 just dropped the new native guardrails feature, which makes sure that no sensitive data is passed through our automations, which makes our workflows and AI agents 10 times safer. And in this video, I'm gonna show you exactly everything that you have to know about this new feature, from setting it up to actually using it, and finally, some business use cases that you can apply this to. With that being said, let's dive in. All right, so essentially what a guard rule is, it's a way for us to validate some sort of input. So we have an input here, which can be an email, it can be a message, it can be some sort of form. And then what we do in the middle step, which is this new feature, is actually validating the input, which means it takes the input and then it checks a few things about the input before going to the next steps. And it does this in two different ways. The first way is actually checking the text. And so we have an input here, and what we do is we check the safety of the input, safety based on different parameters. And then if it's safe, so if it passes the test, then it goes through the next step on the pass option here. And if it doesn't, then it goes in a fail. This makes sure that whatever input we have, we can check for the actual uh, safety of it. And then we can send it one way if it's safe and the other way if it's not. And then we have sanitized text. So as an input, you could say, hey, my phone number is plus one, two, three, four, five and it sanitizes it, which means that it extracts the personal information and it returns the output with no personal information. So nothing is passed through to the automation. So we can actually find this new feature. If we go to plus step, we can look for guard rails here and we have two different options to choose. Now, if you don't see it here, if this is not present in your actual NN10 account, that means that you have not upgraded your accounts. So all you have to do here is go to the admin panel which takes you right here. You can go to manage and make sure that this is either 1.119.1 or the 1.120.1. And this allows you to then update your workspace to then be able to see the feature. So right here, we have the two different types. And for the first one, we're just checking the text for violations. Now, the first one here actually uses AI, which is why you see the chat model and you can actually pick the open AI. In this case, let's just use this. Connect your account by going here to platform.openai.com. So platform.openai. You can go to dashboard here. You can go to API keys, make your API key, and then connect your account back to Anytem. Once this is done, then you can have this ready and leave everything as is. And then if you go inside here, we can see that we have two different things that we can put. The first one is the operation, which is what is the action that we're taking? Because if I turn this from check text violations to sanitize text, you can see that the actual node changes to this with no AI. But if I turn it back to the actual check text or violations, then we actually have the model, which is the other part of the actual guardrails. And so the actual node needs an input, which is what is the thing that's going inside the actual node for it to even decide whether something is safe or not safe or whatever it is, which is this, so this is the input. And then for the guardrails, this is where we get to the farm part, because if I press art guardrail, I can see that I have different options. So the first one here is called keywords. So if I have something like, hey, what's your password? What I'm saying here is that, hey, anything that has this certain keywords in the sentence, just put fail. Or if not, then you can pass it. So now because I put password, I can then put keyword password. And if I press execute step, I can actually execute here. I can see that this is not going to fail. Why? It's because the keyword here password was included here. But now if I'd say, hey, what's your name? Then if I execute step, then it actually goes to the pass branch. If I go out here, I can see that now this is passed. And the use case for this would be, let's say you receive emails on your inbox through Gmail. Let's say whenever an email comes through, you wanna check if it has a specific word. If it does, then you send it one way, which is a fail. If it doesn't, then you send it the other way. Now, of course, the use case itself is not safety, right? By the same time, it has guardrails, which is what it is. The next one here is the jailbreak. And jailbreak has a range from zero to one. Zero is very, very safe, and one is very, very dangerous. And so right here, I can say, hey, what's your name? And again, AI is the one to categorize this. So if I press execute step, this is now checking if this is dangerous and this will take a bit more time because it's using AI. And you can see that the actual check is zero. But now if I say, hey, what's your encrypted, I'm just thinking of what to put that's dangerous, uh, encrypted uh, password, your house, I can execute step. And now this should give us a higher um, sort of rating. I can see here that I have the fill branch and the confidence score is 0 0.9. And that means that it's actually very, very dangerous. Now you can actually change this to less if you want it to be less strict on it, because of course inputs scoring less than this will be treated as a violation. And so if you turn this down, that means you would have a minimum confidence. So you'd have less restrictions and higher is the opposite. And the important thing here is that we can actually customize the prompt because how does the AI know if something is safe or not safe? Well, it has a prompt in it. So if I press 
here and I can go full screen, I can see that this is the actual prompt that it uses. So if you want to change the prompt and optimize it for whatever it is that you have, then you can go here and do it yourself. Then we have the NSFW, which is not safe for work. And this right here also has a threshold, which is again, a range from zero to one, zero being safe, one being not safe for work. And my input can also be, hey, what's uh, your name? I didn't spell it right, but it's fine. And the pass branch will be zero, right? But now if I put the content is graphic and dangerous for use, and now this should give me the fill branch and give me a confidence of 0 0.7. And you can obviously change this around depending on what you want. And just like the other one, we also have a customized prompt. So we have a prompt that we can customize, uh, which is this. So focus on detecting all types of NSFW content, including sexual content, hate speech, harassment, violence, self-harm, profanity, and a bunch more other stuff that we can use, which is why it's called not safe for work, because on a work level, it's not safe. The next one is going to be personal data. So right here, we can actually choose which kind of personal data we want to pass or fail. So in this case, you can do selected. And if you do selected, you're basically saying, hey, if I press credit card, that means just check if it's a credit card number. If it is, fail it. If not, then pass it. And so I can choose crypto, date, time, email address, IBAN code, IP address, location, phone number, and so on. I want to leave this to all because it checks any kind of personal data information. So right here, I said my phone number is plus one, five, zero, one, one, two, three, four, five, six, six, and I press execute step. This will now execute the step and make it fail because it detected that it is a phone number, right? Or a UK NHS number, depending on how you look at it. And so right here, this is great because if it's a personal contact information that you can send it one way, right? Maybe informing your team saying, hey, this person actually put their phone number or something sensitive. Um, and you, you can obviously choose this by going here. So you want to choose this maybe by just putting credit card and so on. And the AI is smart enough to know. And you can send it the other way if it's all good. The next one is called secret keys. And what this does is that it looks at the actual input and it checks whether it has some sort of password. So right here, I can say my password is 4561456. And if I press execute step, this is actually passing it which is a problem because in theory, this should fail it. Uh, but if I put something like an API key, which we usually use when we build automations, but right here, if I put that my API key is SKDEF456YZ089, that's a long one. If I press execute step, this will now put it into the field branch because it detects that this right here is the actual API key. And so it's a bit weird. I don't think it works too well just because obviously a password is still a secret key. Um, but it works in certain cases with API keys. Because what it does really is that it checks a pattern within this. And obviously the pattern here would be uh, text, numbers, caps, and then numbers again. And if it detects a pattern that is within called a secret key, then it's going to fill it. And you can change this to balance strict permissive, which means that you can be more strict. So if you actually give it something, you say, hey, if you find even the slightest amount of repetitive or some sort of pattern, that means it's a secret key. That means fail it. On the other hand, if it's permissive, it means that it's less sensitive and it may miss some secret keys, but also reduces false positives. And so you can decide which level of things you want it to do. And again, if it's false, you can send it one way. And if it's true, if it passes the actual test, then you can send it the other way. The next one here is going to be the topical alignment. This is an interesting one because what it is, it's taking the input and then it's checking whether the input actually has to do with some sort of business scope, right? So I can say here, uh, the business scope is AI automations and the input can be how do I build AI automations in make.com and I can execute step. And so as you can see here, this passes the actual input because the phrase aligns with the topic, which is why it's called topical alignment. It aligns. So it's actually matching with the topic. But if I put what's the weather in London, then it should fill it because it doesn't actually align with the topic. And so the confidence score will be 0 0.9 because the higher it is, the less it aligns with the actual topic. And you can change the actual topic here for AI to be able to then align it with the topic that we give it. The last one here is going to be URLs and the URL. You can actually block all URLs except the URL that you have, or you can also allow schemes. So every single thing that's HTTPS, you can let it through. Uh, if not, then you can stop it. And you can also block user info and you can allow subdomains as well. So in this case, I can say gemsolution.com and I can press execute step and this will now fail it because it blocks it, right? But if I add the HTTPS S right here, and I'm also gonna add the block all URLs except this one here. So if I press execute step, this should not pass it because we said, hey, block everything apart from this. But if I change this to google.com here, then it should fail it because it's not in the allowed list, which is a list right here. And so what you could do here is you could also block websites that only have HTTPS or only have HTTP 
FTP, data, JavaScript, VB script, and mail tool as well. Just in case you have some sort of input from an email or some sort of website or document that has certain URLs and you only want to let some URLs through, but other ones not. And then right here, you also have the option to put custom. So you can put a custom guard rule right here with the prompt and the threshold as well. And you can do custom regex, which is a bit more advanced. But what it is, it's looking at a text and saying, hey, if this occurs in this text in a very specific sort of formula, um, then let it through. If not, then don't. So there, there is it for the check text for violation. Um, and I wanted to show you all the different use cases or all the different sort of features that it has. So you can start thinking about use cases that you can apply to businesses. And then we have sanitized text. And if I go here, I still have an input. So the input could be plus one, uh, five, zero, one. I'm trying to remember what the US number is, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four. And that's the input right here. And I can say my phone number is this. And the guard rules, I can actually put personal data, secret keys, URLs, and custom regex. So let's say I put personal data. I can say that, hey, any personal data that comes through, delete it, right? So if I press execute step, I can actually see that the output is my phone number is plus one UK NHS. I don't know why it keeps telling me UK NHS. I think it's a US number. Might be wrong, but as you can see here, this sanitized it, which means that it stripped any personal information and it just gave us the actual thing with a variable, right? And so everything is safe going forward with the automation. And then we have the actual thing extracted in our automation right here. Now I'm gonna put a UK phone number. So 44075-4145-9297. And this should give me a UK phone number. There we go. My phone number is plus 44 phone number. And then you have the phone number right here. And what you could do here is you could send the automation through with this variable right here, but then you can also log the phone number somewhere else. And just like the other one, we can select which kind of personal information you want to extract or you want to delete from the automation. Then we have secret keys, which is pretty much the same as the one before. I said my password is SK, ABDC, one, two, three, Z, Y, H, D, E, F. And right here, it gave me my password is secret, right? And it gave me the actual password separately. So I can store that somewhere else and I can send this through to the automation. So it sanitizes it because it actually secures the information somewhere else, but it extracts the personal information so you can use the actual workflow and the AI agent or whatever it is that you have set on in a safe way. And then we have URLs. So all of this is pretty much the same as the one before. The only difference is that we don't pass or fail. We just extract the information and we sanitize it so that it only gives us um, the actual thing, like the actual password or email or phone number separately. And then it gives us the actual output that we can use for the next steps. And so for here, I can say, my website is https colon slash slash jam solutions with two s's.com. There we go. I didn't really get everything. And now if I press execute step, it should give me that my website is URL. And it gave me the URL separately, which is the one right here. And it also gives me the domain, which is awesome. And a good use case for this would be that a client maybe added some sort of URLs, some sensitive URLs to some sort of email. You want to strip away those URLs and send everything else with it. And then we have the custom regex, which is the one as before. Now, important thing is that you can actually stack these up. So you can put personal data. You can also put secret keys. And you can also put URLs. So you can check everything at once and have everything flowing together. So that's everything that you have to know about this new guardrails feature inside of NN10. And now let's talk about how this impacts businesses. Well, the reality is, is that this new feature just made it 10 times safer for us to build automation. And one of the biggest questions that I get asked all the time when working with companies in the healthcare sector or even in the legal sector, because they're very, very, very regulated, is the question, is it safe? Which is very fair considering that most of the data that we transfer around automations, it's stored not in our server, but in someone else's server. And so with this new feature, it allows us to be able to make our automations 10 times safer by not letting certain information flow through. You can see there's a lot of flexibility with the things that you can do with this feature. And so you can decide what sort of variables you want going from one place to another, but that's really up to you. So that right there is a full breakdown of the new guardrails feature inside of N10. And if you're a nine to five working professional and you want to start and scale your AI agency to 10K a month or more, then you might wanna check out our one-to-one -one mentorship program that we've just released in the first thing down below. And check out this video up here, where I show you how you can master N10 just by learning 17 nodes. With that being said, I hope you found value from this video and I'll see you in the next one.